Welcome to Jen's Creation Station in Episode 2 of Late Night Lattes and Crafts. There's my ever-present iced latte, and our project this evening is this masculine birthday card that I made for my uncle. I'll move everything over to my craft table and we'll get started on this project. This was the inspiration for my card. I didn't have a wood grain stamp for the background, nor did I have the tree stamp. I believe the wood grain stamp is stamping up and I think the trees are close to my heart but I'm not sure so this is my version um, I have a Tim Holtz wood grain embossing folder and I just inked it after I embossed and let me show you what you'll need for this project this evening I used crumb cake from Stampin Up for my card base it's eight and a half by five and a half and just fold it and fold it in half and then for the mat, you'll need a black piece that is four by five and a quarter. And you'll need another piece of crumb cake or craft color that is three and three quarters by five. And then I use a piece of always artichoke, some type of dark olive color cardstock is fine. And that piece is three inches by three and a half inches. And then the cream colored cardstock you need is two and three quarters by three and a quarter. Now this stamp is from the hunting stamp set from Close to My Heart. And after I stamped it in dark brown or chocolate chip ink, then I used my pastel chalks and chalked it for the trees and the animal and the foliage. For these two pieces here, I used my Stampin' Up! Word Window Punch. I punched it twice on a black cardstock. If you don't have the Word Window Punch, you can make just two strips. They just won't have rounded edges on them. And that strip needs to be 3 8 inches wide by about 2 and a half inches long, and you can get both of those strips out of that. You will also need a piece of hemp uh, string. I believe that's what it's called. I bought it in the jewelry department at Michael's. And that piece needs to be about 20, 22 inches long so you can wrap it twice around the bottom of the cart. So let's get started on our project. My first step is to emboss my craft colored mat for my card. And I, you need your A plate and two B plates. And I'm using my Sizzix wood grain folder from Tim Holtz. I just got that just before Christmas. I'm just going to put that in between and run that through. I'm really loving my new light blue cutting mat here. It was a Christmas present for my husband. It's a real neutral color. I'm really enjoying it. It's easy on the eye. And there is my wood grain embossing. Now the next step is to ink your embossed image. I wanted to show you my mess up first. I used black ink and it was it looked okay but it was just a little too dark for behind my uh, main image, so I chose to use a lighter color green. Although I used always artichoke or dark olive for the mat for the picture or the stamp, I chose to use mellow moss. And all I'm going to do is just rub it on my my uh, image. Now I always put plain paper underneath my inking. That way I don't get ink all over my mat and. I don't use fresh paper. It's recycled from my printers, things that don't print right. And I can just throw it away when I'm done. And there's what that will look like. And you can see it really well. I'm going to actually mount it on the card like this. Our next step for this card is to put our layers together. I've kind of laid it down ahead of time to make sure everything's going to fit. So let me do that. Use my ATG to put these layers together. You can use any kind of adhesive you want. And this is just about an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around. And it might ripple a little bit around your edges. Just set that aside and put these together. The same with this mat, it's about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now we're going to layer these. Now you need to get this layer on before you do your 
brad holes because it goes through all four layers, so it's kind of thick. It's about three-eighths of an inch on all three sides. You're going to line it up even on these three sides. Your ribbon will go here. And now we're ready to move on to the brads. Okay, the next thing we need to do is put our little tabs on. And this first one's about an eighth of an inch down from the edge, and you just need to guesstimate where you want to put them. I'm going to use my Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive and just kind of do the tip for right now. <laughs> I can get the glue out here. Okay. Just about right like that. And then I'm just going to trim the edge off with a pair of scissors. I'm going to get my scissors out here. Just like this. Oops. <laughs> And then I'm going to glue this other edge down, like so. And then the next one sits just a little bit further back, about like that. Glue that one. I really like this quick dry adhesive. It works very well for paper. I've used it for everything. I've glued metal, plastic. Same thing, we're going to flip this over and trim off the excess. And then glue the edge down. Okay, just like that. Now the next thing we want to do is put our brad holes in. What I'm going to do is take my soapstone pencil and I'm just going to mark the center where I want to put my holes. Now I discovered something about my soapstone marker. If you watched my video on my favorite tools, I gave you a link to where to buy these. I discovered when I was shopping for my husband for Christmas that they also sell these in the auto parts store. They use them for welding. So if you can't find one online or don't want to purchase one online, go to your Napa or your local auto parts store. They should have them. And they're still called a soapstone pencil. They've got the holders and the refills. Okay, so now I want to punch holes I can't use my punch on my crop dial because it's too large and my handheld punch doesn't go in far enough. So I'm just going to take a... Remember you're punching through four layers, so... I'm just punch it with my little piercer here. Okay. And then you will need two eighth-inch brads. Just put those through the hole. Don't you just love brads trying to get them separated? There we go. That's that part. And the glue doesn't seem to want to stick right now. Okay, our next step is to put our twine on. Now, putting ribbon and twine on a card is not my favorite thing, and this is not my favorite medium. So, I'm probably going to fight it a little bit. One thing I found out about twine is if you crimp it on the edges, it has a tendency to stay a little bit better. I'm just going to turn this back over, crimp it again, and tie my knot. This is not easy to tie a knot with. It's very thick and stiff. I'm going to pull it tight. And then you adjust your ribbon to, or your twine to where you want it. That looks good like that. I'm going to cut off my ends. I don't leave very much. Ah, there we go. And there's the card front. Now we're ready to attach it to our card base. And there's also about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now what I decided to do because of the twine being thick is to use my puff tape or my scotch double-sided tape on it and that'll make it easier. So I'll be back in a minute and show you how I place my tape on there. Okay, I just want to flip this over and show you my foam tape. Whenever I put foam tape on, I've got ribbon, I try to put it on both sides. It just kind of helps elevate it so it sits better. 
I'm just going to put this it's about an eighth of an inch all the way around and there's the completed card thanks for stopping by Jen's Creation Station I hope you enjoyed episode 2 of Late Night Lattes and Crafts I want to do a special thank you to my husband who's standing over top of me with the video camera to make it oh so much easier to videotape my productions. Bye now.